In this video, we'll take a quick look at the Workflow Warrior Photoshop actions from Photography Planet. This is a set of stackable actions that allows you to create a customized effect and get, get the effect that will look right with your particular photo rather than being forced into a one-size-fits-all Photoshop action. The set works by stacking different types of actions together. There are base actions, and I'll quickly go through them here. Uh, there are 32 different base effects that you can choose from. You run those first as the foundation of your effect. Then there are adjustments that you can use um, for lightening the photo, adding contrast, that sort of thing. And I'll go over those in more detail. Then there are brush on adjustments which allow you to make selective adjustments to only specific parts of the photo. Then there are tone actions that apply different color tones. And there are light leaks that give you sort of a vintage film light leak effect. And there are grain actions, vignette actions, and there are four finishing actions for sharpening, flattening, and that sort of thing. Okay, so now let's go through these different sections in more detail. As I mentioned, there are 32 base effects that will serve as the foundation of your edit. They can also be used as one-click standalone Photoshop actions, just like a more typical Photoshop action um, and they're broken down into different categories so we have general bases that do subtle simple things that um, will work with a lot of photos they're a good starting point in a lot of cases um, there are four matte effects four haze effects five faded actions five soft color bases four cross-processed two HDR and then four black and whites and within each of those subsets, there is a run all action. Um, so for example, if I want to give it a soft color effect, but I'm not sure which of the five soft color bases I want to use, I can click on this run all soft color bases, and it will apply all five of the actions, and I can see which one will work best with my photo. So then if you go over here into the layers palette, you'll see there are five folders, one for each of the different bases. So I can just show and hide them one at a time to see which one I like as a starting point for my photo. Okay. I'm not going to use any of those, so I'm going to go ahead and delete them. There is also a run all base actions, and this will apply all 32 of the actions, basically in the same way that that um, soft color bases, just applied all of the soft color bases, this will apply all 32 of the bases, and then you just um, show and hide the different layers to see which one works best with your photo. So for this photo I'm going to use an HDR effect, so I'm going to click on the run all HDR base actions. And um, there are only two HDR bases, unlike the others F4 or 5 actions in the set. And I can run them both and then choose which one I want. So there's the regular HDR base, and then there's a stronger HDR base. I'm going to use the regular one, and I'm also going to tone it down a little bit by reducing the opacity down to 90%. Okay, so that's my base effect that I'm going to work from. So I have that part covered. Now we'll move on to the adjustment actions. Um, there are adjustments for uh, making colors pop, adding vibrance, warming, cooling, desaturating, shadow recovery, highlight recovery. You can add a matte effect, add haze, give it a washed out look, faded look, lighten, darken, brighten, increase contrast, and reduce contrast. And you can do any of these, um, like for example with this photo, I want to warm it up because it was taken at sunset. I want to kind of enhance the, uh, the sunset feel. So I click warm it up, and um, if you go over into the layers palette, you can see that that layer was applied. Now, if you don't know which ones you want to use, I'm going to go ahead and delete that for a minute. Um, so we're back to just having the um, base HDR effect. If you don't know which adjustments you want, there is a run all adjustments action. So I'm going to go ahead and play that. And that will create a folder with all of our different um, adjustments. I believe there are 15 different adjustments that will be applied in the folder. So then you get a message that just tells you to open the adjustments folder in the layers palette to view the different adjustments. Okay, so from here you can experiment and see which ones you want to use. And all of these are adjustable um, based on the opacity. So for example, 
like I said, I want to use a warming effect on this photo. So by default, the opacity on that layer is set at 50%. If you want to make it a stronger effect, then you can just increase the opacity. If you want to make it a softer effect, then you can decrease the opacity. In this case, um, I'm going to use a little bit softer than, than the default. I'm going to use it at 40% opacity. Um, and you can adjust all of these in the same way by um, increasing the opacity or decreasing it to uh, strengthen or soften the effect. So I'm also going to use a uh, contrast boost. And this one by default is at 30%. I think I'm going to reduce that a little bit um, down to 20%. And you can uh, use as many of these as you want. You just uh, select whichever ones you want to use and they kind of just stack on each other. So you can use as many or as few as needed. Now if we move on to the brush on adjustments, I'll demonstrate how they work. I'm going to run the make it pop action. Okay, so after you run that, it gives you this notification that says use a white brush with soft edges and paint the areas of the photo where you want the colors to pop. Adjust the opacity of the folder to make the effect softer or stronger. So then you click on continue, you can go ahead and use your brush. So I have white selected as a foreground color and I'm going to uh, select a soft a large soft brush here. I'm going to use a large brush um, so I can do it quickly for demonstration. Um, if I was doing this um, in real life with a real photo I would uh, be a little bit more careful here down by the trees but I'm just going to generally brush over the entire sky area. And then um, you can see the impact by turning it off. So you can see it kind of adds some drama and intensity to the sky. And to increase that effect, I'll just increase the opacity. So if you turn it up to 100%, you can see the, um, the effect a little bit stronger. Now for this photo, I think I'm going to take it down to 80%. Okay, and we can move on to some other brush on adjustments here. I'm going to run the highlight recovery. And it gives you the same message here to use a soft white brush. Now I want to um, adjust the highlights that are in the reflections on the water. So I use a little bit of a smaller brush here. And again, I would be more careful in a, with a photo I was using for real, but just for demonstration, I'll quickly brush over the uh, reflections in the water. And you show and hide this layer, you can see that it impacts the highlights there on the water. And the process of using all of these brush on adjustments is the same. You run the action, then use a soft white brush to brush where you want the uh, adjustment to take, take place. And the last one I'm going to demonstrate here is um, the contrast boost. Now I'm going to turn the opacity all the way up to 100% so it's easy to see. And I'm going to brush on the dock here to increase the contrast and make it stand out a little bit more. Okay. And then if I hide this layer, you can see the impact that that adjustment has. Okay, so the brush on adjustments are pretty simple to use, but they give you a lot of flexibility to make selective adjustments where needed. And then the tone actions, there are, I believe, 22 different tones that you can apply. Um, you can apply them one at a time. For example, if I want to boost the blues in the image, I can just select the blue boost and go ahead and run that action. Um, in this case, I don't want to use that. I just want to demonstrate, so I'm going to delete that layer. If you don't know which tones you want to run or want to use, you can use the um, the run all tone actions and play that, and it will add all 22 of the tones in a folder, and then you can open the folder and see which ones you want to use on the photo. Okay, so now that's done running, it just gives you a message to open up the tones folder. So when I open that up, there are all the different layers here, and you can just show and hide which ones you want. So for example, there was the blue boost. Um, let's see here. Rose gives it kind of a red tone. Peachy. And again, you can adjust these by adjusting the opacity. So, for example, this peachy tone is by default set at 40% opacity. If I increase the opacity, it gives a stronger effect. 
decrease the opacity, it's softer. Um, there's violet, and then there are several split tone effects down here below. With this photo, I'm not going to use any of the tones since I've already applied the um, warming adjustment to get the tone that I want. Then there are light leaks. There are 18 different light leaks included, six different colors, three different variations of each color, left, right, and top. So for example, here is um, the orange left light leak. In most cases, with most photos, you're going to want to reduce the opacity of that light leak layer to soften the effect. So instead of being at 70%, I'll reduce it down to 45% or 50% and get a softer effect. Just depends on the photo you're using and um, the type of look that you want to get. I don't want to use that, so I'm going to hide it. Um, and there's also a run all light leaks action here. If you want to run that, it will apply all of them in one folder, just like the tones action that I ran. And then you can quickly experiment to see which one works best with your photo. Then there are two actions for adding grain. There's a light and a heavy. I'm going to go ahead and add heavy grain. And you can see it, it adds some noise and grain to the photo. This is fully customizable um, through the use of smart objects. So if you double click here on add noise, you can see that it set at 20% by default for the heavy grain. The light grain is set at 5%. But you can adjust this if you want to make it a softer effect. You can reduce that number to whatever you want and get just the right amount of noise. The heavy grain action is pretty heavy. So in most cases, you probably want to tone that down a little bit. But it depends on the photo, the size of the photo, how much noise or grain is in the photo to start with. And there are three actions for adding vignettes. There's soft, medium, and a heavy. I'll go ahead and apply the heavy vignette here just for demonstration. And then the last part of the set is the finishes. There is an action for making a snapshot, for flattening the image, and two actions for sharpening. If you're not familiar with Photoshop's snapshot feature, um, I'm going to go ahead and demonstrate that for a second here. If you see, all the adjustment layers that I've created are uh, over here in the Layers palette. If I click on make a snapshot, it essentially creates a snapshot of the image in the file as it is right now. So it says here your snapshot's been recorded. You can access it in the history panel. So I'm going to go ahead and continue. And I'll go back to that in just a minute here. Um, I'm going to go ahead and run the flatten action. So if you're done editing your photo and you want to um, save it for printing or just save it in general, you can run the flatten action. When you do that, it'll give you a warning here to run the make new snapshot action first, which I already did, so I'm going to click continue. And then if you go over here in the layers palette, you'll see that all the layers have been flattened into one layer. So now at this point, if you realize that uh, you want to go back and make other changes, you can access your snapshot through the history panel. If you go to window, history, and then go up here, you'll see your snapshot. Um, and now all of the um, layers have been restored. So in this case, I'm going to go back to the flattened version. And uh, I'm going to demonstrate here on the sharpening actions. There is a light sharpening and a stronger sharpening. You want to flatten the action or flatten the image first. And that's what this message is a reminder to flatten it first, which I've already done. So I'm going to go ahead and continue. And then it applies sharpening to the photo. You can do it stronger or softer. And um, that pretty much demonstrates all the actions here. I'm going to go back and show how I would do this um, without running all the actions. So in a little bit of a faster workflow, go back to my starting photo. So, if I knew that I wanted to add an HDR effect, I could just run the HDR base. And then I reduce that down to 90% opacity. Then I moved on to the adjustments. I used the warm it up action, and I reduced that opacity to 40%. And I ran the contrast boost. 
and I reduce that opacity to 20%. And then for the brush on actions, did make it pop. And um, I'm going to increase the size of the brush here. Run that over the sky. And increase the opacity. And then I did highlight recovery on the water. Use a little bit of a smaller brush for this one. And then I did a contrast boost. Increase the opacity to 100%. Apply that to the dock. And if I were doing this for real, I would uh, use a smaller brush and get in some of these finer details here. Just for demonstration, I'll go ahead and skip that. And I didn't apply any of the tones, any of the light leaks, grain, or vignette. I'll go ahead and make a snapshot. Flatten the image. And apply light sharpening. And that's it. So you can see that with the help of the actions, I can create the look I want pretty quickly, um, much quicker than I could by doing all those steps manually. And um, with the run all actions, you can also experiment and see how different actions impact your photo if you're not sure exactly what type of effect you want to get. So that covers the Workflow Warrior Photoshop actions. Thank you for watching.